Man steps from meaning, page 100. Existential frustration. Man's will to meaning can also be frustrated, in which case logotherapy speaks of existential frustration. The term existential may be used in three ways to refer to one, existence itself, that is the specifically human mode of being. Number two, the meaning of existence. And number three, the striving to find a concrete meaning in a personal existence. That is to say, the will to meaning. Existential frustration can also result in neurosis. For this type of neurosis, local therapy has coined the term neogenic neurosis. In contrast to neurosis in a traditional sense of the word, that is psychogenic neurosis. Neogenic neurosis have their origin not in the psychological, but rather in the neurological, from the Greek nous, meaning mind, dimension of human existence. This is another logotherapeutic term which denotes anything pertaining to the specifically human dimension. Neogenic neurosis. Neogenic neurosis do not emerge from conflicts between drives and instincts, but rather from existential problems. Among such problems, the frustration of the will to meaning plays a large role. It is obvious that in neogenic cases, the appropriate an adequate therapy is not psychotherapy in general, but rather logotherapy. A therapy that is, which dares to enter the specifically human dimension. Let me quote the following instance. A high ranking American diplomat came to my office in Vienna in order to continue psychoanalytic treatment which he had begun five years previously with an analyst in New York. At the outset, I asked him why he thought he should be analyzed, why his analysis had been started in the first place. It turned out that the patient was discontented with his career and found it most difficult to comply with American foreign policy. His analyst, however, I told him again and again that he should try to reconcile himself with his father because the government of the US, as well as his superiors, were nothing but father images and consequently his dissatisfaction with his job was due to the hatred he unconsciously harbored toward his father. Through an analysis lasting five years, the patient had been prompted more and more to accept his analyst interpretations until he finally was unable to see the forest of reality for the trees of symbols and images. After a few interviews, it was clear that his will to meaning was frustrated by his vocation, and he actually longed to be engaged in some other kind of work. As there was no reason for not giving up his profession and embarking on a different one, he did so with most gratifying results. He has remained contented in this new occupation for over five years, as he recently reported. I doubt that in this case, I was dealing with an erotic condition at all. And that is why I thought they did not need any psychotherapy, nor even logotherapy, for the simple reason that he was not actually a patient. Not every conflict is necessarily neurotic. Some amount of conflict is normal and healthy. In a similar sense, suffering is not always a pathological phenomenon. Rather than being a symptom of neurosis, suffering may well be a human achievement, especially if the suffering grows out of existential frustration. I would strictly deny that one's search for meaning 
to his existence, or even his doubt of it, in every case is derived from or results in any disease. Existential frustration is in itself neither pathological nor pathogenic. A man's concern, even his despair over the worthlessness of life, is an existential distress, but by no means a mental disease. It may well be that interpreting the first in terms of the latter motivates a doctor to bury his patient's existential despair under a heap of tranquilizing drugs. It is his task, rather, to pilot the patient through his existential crisis of growth and development. Logotherapy regards it, its assignment as that of assisting the patient to find meaning in his life. In as much as logotherapy makes him aware of the hidden logos of his existence, it is an analytical process. To this extent, logotherapy resembles psychoanalysis. However, in logotherapy's attempt to make something conscious again, it does not restrict its activity to instinctual facts within the individual's unconscious, but also cares for existential realities, such as the potential meaning of his existence to be fulfilled, as well as his will to meaning. Any analysis, however, even when it refrains from including the neurological dimension in his therapeutic process, tries to make the patient aware of what he actually longs for in the depth of his being. Logotherapy deviates from psychoanalysis insofar as it considers man a being whose, whose main concern consists in fulfilling a meaning, rather than in the mere gratification and satisfaction of drives and instincts, or in merely reconciling the conflicting claims of it, ego, and superego, or in the mere adaptation and adjustment to society and environment.